All right. So this is what remains of Edith Finch, 100%. Uh, we'll just get started, and I'll start explaining how this game works. So yeah, so this is what remains of Edith Finch, 100%. Uh, it's 100% console because I'm playing this on PlayStation 4. Uh, it's just easier for me to capture. And a lot of this uh, really I'm playing this, and you only lose you only lose little bits and pieces of time that. on it. I'm just um, the beginning with the house. And yeah, so. Uh, I'm picking 100% instead of any percent because any percent skips over basically all the interesting parts of the game, most of the interesting parts of the game, which are the uh, the little stories. I 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. So the format of this game is in the format of a diary. You're reading Edith Finch's diary as a third party, um, and the story is basically about the incredibly cursed Finch family, and Edith is the last remain remaining alive member. Uh, they're basically cursed to die young, and only one member of each generation even has children. Or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. And basically, Edith, we play as Edith for most of the game, so we're experiencing the diary through her eyes. Um, and we're basically discovering all of these stories about her ancestors and previous that, members of her family tree from her point of view but now I as she figures it out. That only the house knew the There's to. some interesting sort of timeline things, so... The woods around the house have always been uncomfortable. The person reading this diary, it's in quote-unquote present day. This game came out in 2018. The game takes place in 2017, and then this part, Edith's part, takes place in 2016, which is... Uh, right after her mother's death, so she got this key in her mother's will. And now she's coming back to the house to figure out what uh, her mom has been hiding from her all these years. Uh, so the first things first, we're gonna the go house into the house. Like the it. house is crazy Boy, looking, as you can see. It. Uh, it started as a regular house, and then they just kept adding to it and adding to it, because child, every time, every time a, a family member died, they just like, now, instead of reusing a room, they just I knew boarded exactly it off and locked it up. Were. It was never reused I again, and so house. each house, basically each, um, each uh, floor of the house represents like a, a generation. Oh, through the doggy door it used to be a lot easier. So the front door is locked, so we're just gonna immediately go in through the side door, and uh, we're gonna walk through the kitchen and go right into Walter's room. The first time in years. Is the only open room in the whole house. I felt like I was home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just there's nothing on the there's nothing on the the ground like floor except for the teeth. kitchen and there's a living room and there's a library. The library just locked off. Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. There you go. Then Milton is one of uh, one of Edith's people. brothers. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. That's Great Uncle Walter's room, and this is the thing that this is what the key unlocks basically. This is the key that uh, our mom gave us. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping. So the way this is gonna work is, as we find more secrets, we're gonna find more stories that lead to more secrets that lead to more stories, and it just goes on and on until we unlock the whole house. So we've unlocked Molly's room. Molly is gonna be the first of our family members that we actually read about. Um, and so the way this works is that we find a, something about there's um, there's going to be a little stand that our great grandmother Edie made for each character here, and we're gonna read about the death of each. December thirteenth, nineteen forty. This one happens to be a diary, uh, one of Molly's diary entries. I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about. This is one of the three required. Uh, one of the three required stories you have to do for any percent. The three you have to do for any percent are Molly, Barbara, and then the last one, which is just Edith's. My Halloween candy was all gone. Uh, so for this, you need to basically you have to do at least three of these. There are lots of there's lots of different things you can eat here as Molly. 
Um, you can you can hear her. She's very young. She thinks she's eight or something. She's very young, maybe ten. So we eat three things here. So yeah, Molly was sent to to bed without dinner, so she's hungry. So she's eating everything in her house. There's more things you can eat, but now that we've then eaten three things, we're just gonna go straight outside. Window. It was a barn swallow yeah, going so back to, to the nest. To unlock this this sequence, you have to eat three things, or at least look at three things. And suddenly. This is one of the longest sequences in the whole game as well. Come on. I tried to be quiet, but the so we just follow the swallow here. I jumped and I almost got her. We're a kitty cat now? We're just following the bird here. You press yeah, R to jump as the cat. The tree. You just want to do this I really fast. If you, fly. with a lot of practice, you can do this really, really I quickly. That wasn't too bad. So, Molly's story basically gets cut up into different animals. So first we're a human, and then we're a cat, and then an owl. So now we're the owl. So now uh, we're looking for rabbits, and where the rabbits spawn are random. So we're just gonna sort of look around and try to find some rabbits. Then we're gonna swoop down and grab them and eat them. The sounds that, the sound that we make while eating the rabbits is really gross. So it's just like a heads up. We got it. There we go. The first rabbit and then we have to do a mama rabbit after this. I imagined his face looking up and seeing mine through my talons. I swallowed him up and I didn't chew one bit. <laughs> I find this game pretty. It's despite it's like really dark, you know, it's really dark subject matter. I find this game really to be very charming. A mama, mama rabbit. rabbit. Found you. I got you. Come on, I got you. I got him. Yep. Very generous hitbox he there. He's almost too big to carry. I started choking. But I couldn't stop All right, so here's the next. But suddenly, I was a shark. So now, that's our next form, is the shark. So we're a shark out of water here, so... As you might guess, this controls terribly. You kind of want to... I hope that you don't get stuck behind a tree like this. But, you know, it's what it is. We'll just keep going. Uh, L and R, basically... L moves the head... R moves the head, and L moves the tail. That moves me. I rolled off the cliff and into the ocean. So I had a little bit of time lost for hitting the tree, but it wasn't actually too bad. Now we have to bite the seal twice. I wanted fat, juicy seals. But bit, bit him once. Now we gotta find him again. I tore off her flipper, and it tasted really good. You seal. So we're looking for the. There should be, like, a blood trail somewhere, and that's where the seal is. Ha! Alright, that was, that was actually a good seal. So now we're gonna be the monster. So the monster controls really strangely. So the left analog stick controls the tentacle, and then you hit the right trigger to, like, zoom up like we're doing. So we can actually just sort of let it go like this as far away as possible, but then it gets really hard to control. So as long as we're close up, it's pretty it's pretty okay to control. Uh, there are a bunch of humans on this boat. We're gonna try to avoid all of them because we wanna avoid the animation of eating them. We're just trying to go straight to the captain's chamber, eat the captain, because that's what uh, allows us to keep going. There's a drunken sailor in there. One of the achievements for this game is letting the drunken sailor sing his entire song, though. What would you do with a drunken sailor? You don't do that. Sometimes that door doesn't want to open. After the last passenger, I was still hungry. It wasn't the last passenger, it was the captain. Something I had to have, so I swam towards it. I'm gonna swim up a drain pipe here. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell rained on the old pipe. 
This is the worst controlling thing in the whole game, I think, is this tentacle right here. We're gonna go through a storm drain, up a drain, and then into a toilet. Then, right here, the, um... Like that, how it controls is just awful. It's really hard to predict where it's actually gonna go there. I, I'm not. Sh I don't. I don't have full a full grasp on how that works. All right. So this is the this is the end of Molly's thing. So the way this is gonna work is that uh, Molly's story oh, gave us information. The information is that that window to our left opens. So we're gonna go out the window and in through a different window and unlock Edie's room, our great grandma, and Molly's mom. <clears throat> I guess it's Molly's sister. It needs to be, and we both know I will be delicious. <clears throat> the good seal, that's what the time save there is because that seal was really, really fast. We're gonna draw in Molly. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. So no, it's Molly's daughter. Molly, Molly is, is one of uh, Edie's daughters. So Edie, our great grandma, had five kids. My mom never told me. Uh, Molly, stories. Barbara, Walter, would have, but and then um, the twins, Sam and Calvin. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do so, Odin. Odin is the guy who actually moved here and and didn't build the house, but is the person who moved to the U.S. Great grandma Edie's room. Let's do Odin real fast here. This is in the form of like um For one of these years, the finches have been famous. Odin Finch buries the on January seventh, but forty foot waves. Odin's daughter. There's a bunch of ba there's basically a whole bunch of dreaming of a new finch house. There's a whole bunch of uh sort of backstory there on how the finches Whatever's moved to the US from Norway or something. Ingeborg. Odin's wife. So now we're gonna go into Edie's bathroom. Even in their 90s. And we're gonna come out Sometimes through Edie's Sam and Calvin's room. Than my mother. Twins. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. So yeah, Grandpa Sam. So Sam and Calvin. Sam is actually Edith's mom's mom. Uh, Edith's mom's dad. Grandpa. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. The whole point there is to to search around Edie's room and find this. And there's a bunch of things you can pull there. You just have to know the order to pull stuff in. All right, so we have now... There's a secret, basically, passage from Sam and Calvin's room into their mom's room. Uh, Edie is an interesting character. She's one of the more interesting characters in the game. She's the only one who lives... Uh, past 50, I want to say, but she lives to be like almost 100. I guess my so she's alive. Uh, she was alive for Lewis's funeral, which was mentioned at the very beginning here. So we're gonna do. Uh, so this is Sam's twin brother Calvin. We're doing his story now. How I want to remember my brother, by Sam Fink. The thing I remember. So this one, if you have uh, motion sickness, this is the one where I suggest you probably look away. So we are now Calvin on the swing here. And each of the analog sticks controls each of his legs here. So I'm actually moving the analog sticks up and down together to control each of his legs there. And as you know, the f well, we don't know, but the finches are very injury prone. I mean, they're they're death prone, so they're also injury prone. And so um, you can see that Calvin's leg is broken there. Calvin seems to have been the, the daredevil of the family. And given the way he goes out, it's uh, sort Maybe of if I hadn't said that. it bears out. We're um, basically gonna we're actually gonna we're going to there's a this is a tree swing obviously, and we're just going to do a full revolution around the tree here. And maybe he'd still be here, but I doubt. So Sam is trying to say like, well, if things had been different, maybe he would still be around, but. I think That's he was just to too much of a daredevil. And we've done it. We've gone around. So I'll let you guys know when it's safe to look again. So he goes flying. And there you go. It's safe now to look. 
But Calvin is done. All right. So this is the first of the optional. Well, no, Odin was technically optional as well. Um, so this was an optional one. So Sam and Calvin's room is connected to Barbara's room. Barbara is one of Sam's sisters, along with Molly. And Barbara is another one of the required, uh, required uh, stories to do because it unlocks. It unlocks the basement, and that's the most important thing. another little secret you just have to find yourself basically just like wandering around this game is very much about like exploration and the more things you find there's lots of like little like little pieces of narrative kind of everywhere so the more things you find the more narrative little narrative blurbs you get from Edith there's a I think it's the first mention of her belly so if you look down here You'll see oh, that. I always thought of Barbara as oh. a child star. Oh, oh, Barbara. Yeah, there you go. So there's Barbara. Oh my goodness gracious! Hello. I'm supposed to go straight there. Uh, got a lot of, of control. All the stories people wrote about Barbara's death. I'm surprised Edie saved this one. But we'll see it. Uh, we'll see it here. After the, so this is a long one. This is one of I think this, the second longest uh, of all of the uh, of the stories. The longest one being our brother. Inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. So of the first generation, so all of Edie's kids, we've done we've done Molly and Calvin. Uh, now we're going to do Barbara and Walter, and then we're going to do Sam last. And once we're done with Sam, then we're going to do all of Sam's kids. So this is a cutscene. Time to hydrate. She'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a But basically, there are little hints to the fact that Edith is pregnant and this is happening. So that was the very first one, is the bellies. But if you look down while you're walking as Edith, you can see that there's like a big belly protrusion. Um, and it's pretty easy to just not think anything of it uh, initially. But uh, I'm not really spoiling anything because uh, once once we're out once we're out of the basement. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll see that that's actually the case. That was Ben. That ben is Edie's husband. Great it was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So, yeah, the reason, the reason this is a, the, an important story is because we discover how to get into the basement. And the basement is going to unlock the rest of the house for us. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried? This is actually a really cool one because uh, it's like the, 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 like the sort of a trashy comic style, and it's a really cool like comic book style. The basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? There's lots of little bits of uh, of humor, despite like how how dark this game is. Like, there's lots of little like little bits of humor in it anyway, and it's pretty great. And winding until finally the key pops out. There you go. So that's how you get into the basement. I'll be back in a is uh, the crank on the the music box uh, opens the basement. Rick hadn't returned, so Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. So now we're actually going to control Barbara here. She reached for the music box, and as she wound, and they have to actually like rotate the the right. Stick that properly. It's one of the worst things to control. Now we're controlling Barbara. Yes, yeah, I have control of the camera and everything. But you get little vignettes anyway, so you still get vignettes. So we're gonna go to the, the fridge. I know where the fridge is, but the whole thing is to, to explore here with the, the Halloween music. Um, one another one of the achievements in this game is to knock all of the the balls off the pool table with the with this um, with this crutch and smack Rick in the face, which is what he deserves. Honestly, he's not a good person. Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your screen. Another long cutscene. I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you <laughs> she threw him out. Sure. But she kept the 
little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. The late, late picture show? Later. Barbara! This is back when oh, TV turned off. There's no more TV. Ah! Okay. All right, I'm controlling Barbara here in a second again. We're gonna find... So we actually know where Walter's room is because Walter's room is the very first room that we entered as Edith when we first started. So it's right up the stairs and to the right. So we're gonna go into Walter's room again. Oh, that was a, that was a roller skate. My other roller skate. Intent roller skate. Walter's room here. Walter has a really cool bed. Walter had vanished, but his bedside radio was still on. Orca's Island police describe the man as six feet tall, with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. This is all more cutscene. And, and then, what's going to happen is we will, once we regain control of Barbara, is we will use the, the other knowledge that we've gained, which is we know that there's a secret entrance between Walter and Molly's room. So I'm just gonna go in. We're gonna go in through Molly's room. We're gonna open Molly's door and smack him in the face again. In years, Molly had already died by now. Smacked him in the face. He's gonna slip on that roller skate I showed you before. Now he's gonna fall. Oh, we're good. But she sensed the story might not be over yet. He was right. The story is not over yet. Down the stairs. Oh look, the body's gone. Now we back up. Listen for his. We know that I have to. I know I have to go to the front door, so we go to the front door. And that's the last thing I do. I'm not going to control for the rest of the game here, or the rest of this little vignette. From inside the house. Oh dear. Just play out this cutscene here. <laughs> Bravo, Barbara. <laughs> Oh, what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going <laughs> to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself. Yeah, so if we're if we're doing any percent after this is over we're gonna go straight to the end of the game we just walk through all of the rooms and ignore all of the stories because there's no there's no more like re required knowledge uh, from like there's no more acquired knowledge from these stories to for, for secrets the big piece of knowledge here is that we know how to get into the basement now so after we done we're done with this we're gonna go into the basement It is another story. Walter's story is also very interesting. That's one of the in more interesting ones as well. If you so that that family tree that Edith is um, that family tree that Edith is um, is, uh, is is drawing into is also is also the pause menu. So you can actually take a look at the at that family tree at any time. And uh, you can actually look at the dates, and you can see that um, one of the things you can see here, if you'd pay attention, is that Walter actually lives quite a long time. He lives to be like 50 something. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I got why right now. Now I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. We're going to the. Let's go to the basement. Figure out what happened with Walter. Next. Walter is the last remaining um, person from this generation that didn't have kids, so we're going to do Sam after that.
There's a, the reason there's that little hesitation is that uh, it drops your input once uh, there's a loading screen like that, so you gotta remember to actually re-hit it. Careful here. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Be careful. Sometimes it'll drop your input and then start winding it in the wrong direction there for some reason, so just be a little bit careful when you're using your analog stick to, you know, you're, you're just literally rotating it clockwise. We're gonna follow the exact um, the exact steps that Barbara took in the comic book. So we're gonna go. There's the, the pool table, and then there's the table saw. So we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go, and we're gonna find. Down at the basement once. We're gonna go to the, the fridge here. She's hiding presents. All right. So we're actually in the fridge here. More than that. So the, the the basement was always off limits, and that's why she wasn't allowed to I eat Edith as a kid. Gone. Yeah, there you go. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. As a kid. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. There you go. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for thirty years. <laughs> so Walter was just in the basement for 30 years eating peaches. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive the evening. This is shaking my controller, in case you're curious. But after a few days, I settled into November of 1968. That's what kept me sane. You can, uh, you can always, you can see the timeline here from the uh, calendar on the left there. Having a schedule. Uh, what you're doing there is I'm pressing down RT to press down on the can opener, and then I'm rotating the left analog stick tomorrow. clockwise to open it again. Now it's January of 1976, so he's been down there for eight years. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And oh. then, and then one day, everything, everything just stopped. Now it's March of 2005. Stop. Now it's been 30 years, and you can Whatever see he has all the was, uh, the spots there. It was gone. So now he's in his. I think he's in his. Maybe supposed to be in his 50s or something. Waiting. He spent his whole life in the basement Maybe after Barbara died. Got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can. So ostensibly, this actually tells us how to get out of the basement. But um, the reason any percent doesn't require Walter is because oh, uh, you can just go straight down here without Walter, without knowing Walter's story for some reason. So you just skip it and go straight through. And you just do this part. I know it's out there, somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. And Molly. Alright. It's gonna... And Calvin. Sledgehammer the crap out of this. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Hint. Oh, wow. The Finches we're talking about, right? Out there. I want you to know, I'm ready for it. Right. I'm going to appreciate all of it. So at this point, yeah, we're we're eighty percent of the way through the any percent run, but we're just under halfway through the hundred percent run. A month or a single week, I'd be happy with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Yeah, I got hit by a train. Alright. So we're gonna draw Walter. With his nice Walter white beard. I can't believe my mom, mom never, never told me he was down here. I'm sure So that's that's a theme in this that's a theme in this story, is that basically is uh is Edith's mom protecting her by not telling her anything about all of this stuff. Also, yes. Fun fact, I'm holding up here. 
go down the stairs. Maybe she was afraid I'd There's a lot of weird, uh, there's a lot of weird, uh, control stuff in this game, but that is the most baffling one, is pressing up to go down. Still pressing up, actually. I can only imagine what else she was hiding. We're gonna go through the same hole that Walter went through. Fortunately, that train is decommissioned now, so it's safe for, for Edith to do this. So now what we're gonna do is we are... There's a lot of nothing that happens here. So we're gonna explore the outdoors, like the outside of the house. We're in the backyard, basically. The big thing that... that thing, the big thing we're gonna do... Or maybe two. Is... Oh, yeah. So there's another, uh, another hint that she's pregnant right there. She's basically addressing this this diary for like her unborn child. Uh, we have a lot of time now to to wander around here. She's uh, what's gonna happen here with the when we're walking through the t the family cemetery is that she's gonna start thinking about like why the finches are cursed. And look down, there's your belly. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. Oh uh, yeah, this is a this this fallen over statue is a hint for another one of the deaths that happened later. And the history you're a part of. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably. So the great thing about this game is that it lets you explore, but it also gently hints gently tells you where to go with these narrative blurbs. I People in these stories believed them. So, yeah, so the little, the little um, subtitles for what Edith is saying is basically like, if you get one of those, then odds are you're, you've gone in the correct direction. Or at least there's something of interest where you're standing. We're going to go up the stairs. Oh, you can kind of see the house from a different angle here, so we're in the backyard now. That history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. Fingerless gloves. Shout out to fingerless gloves. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? Again, death is sort of omnipresent in the life. <clears throat> it's embarrassing for me to admit this, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three of the gerbils are mine, and two had been my fault. You're the human ones, so this is this is the rest of the. It was Ven is Edie's husband. Edie is our great grandma. My mom was always trying to move on, but. And this is Odin, the person who came here, and there's Ingeborg, young Edie as well. But here's the next generation of people here. Here's Sam, Gus, Greg. This is my generation here. Andre's my dad. Two brothers, Milton and Lewis. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday. And find everything out for myself. There's re- I mean, you could have just not left the key, right? So there's no reason why. It, there has to be a reason why she did that. We're gonna end up uh, going through a window in the second floor into uh, Sam's room as an adult, as opposed to if Sam's room when he was a kid was so with Calvin. Climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. So there you go. So now we know for sure that she's pregnant. That's the first time that she directly says it. But it's pretty clear that she's pregnant the whole time. Twenty-two weeks is what, like uh, five and a half months pregnant, something like that. I never met so, him second him, trimester. But I think he and my mom had a lot in common. So we're gonna go now. We're gonna go slide through this door. Do Sam's story. This is one of the coolest ones by far. This one's really cool, in my opinion. Young Don. Don being my mom. Don. I promise. You're perfect. 
It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this. Week. Okay, got it. Odin Finch National Park. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. So the way this works is that each each of the vignettes continues as soon as you've taken the correct picture, basically. Um, so the right analog stick is move, and the left analog stick is the zoom. So this is Sam teaching Don how to hunt. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of. Get a picture of Don here. Let me look behind you. Do I, have I just really like this uh, mechanic. I don't like shooting deer, obviously. Not a fan Great of that shot, at all. Don. Not a fan of shooting deer. I'm proud of you, right, Don. So we're 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 we're, try, we're racing the uh, the auto. Dad, there we go. It's twitching. So if you if you do it too slowly, there you have to start the whole thing over again. Just focus on the camera. Not to think about and there it is. That's how Sam goes. I think I, I think the the fact that that's how Sam goes informs a lot of the mom's decision making. Actually. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. It's, it's a little heartbreaking. I think it's a little heartbreaking. Sam huh? spent his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. The, the way she says that is that's like the most heartbreaking one is I wish that mom would have told me that one But I think that's also what caused because both of her Sam brothers died. had died by then. My mom and Edie got we're, now we're gonna find her two brothers. She had two brothers Gus and Gregory um, By then they had both been they had both passed away and um, And so it was just her and her dad and then the dad died I think that's what informed a lot of Don's behavior actually this is the first of the two uh, of Don's you brothers. Do you remember the, the two sons, Sam's two sons. He was alone. Like, so this is the like little baby. Happy, but only he could see it. We're gonna be in a bathtub here. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. We're gonna we're control right now. I'm controlling the ducky and the arm. I'm controlling Mr. Ducky Boy here. So Kay is is Sam's first wife, and the fa the mother of the three kids. Gregor is the youngest. Is the youngest kid. Hello. So now this is just like this is actually one of the more technical, technically difficult um, of the uh, of the mini games. Yeah, because the, the the this this frog controls extremely poorly, actually. Uh, this is another one of the achievements in the game: is if you knock all of the the letters off the wall here, Gregory. I'll, I'll... So now we're going to wait for these duckies to uh, form around me. They'll give me a boost up here. So. So I'm gonna knock off this the whale, and now the whale is gonna give me a big enough boost to uh, get the soap down here. Oh come on! Oh, this is frustrating, actually. There it is. Now we just on this. Get on the get on the whale. All the way up here to continue the story. Nope, we missed it. There we go. This continues the story, so now we're just gonna wait around a little bit. I worried about a baby being too happy. So I'm waiting here so I can hit this. So she's gonna she's gonna I'm gonna, I know you I'm gonna have to turn on gonna turn the uh, the faucet back on here. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. I wish there we go. So that was nice and fast. Otherwise, to get all the way back up there anyway. So we're gonna turn to a frogman. Twin. 
Oh, that was fast enough. About Gregory. About everything. Swim into the drain here. Get for Gregory. But I know what happened wasn't your fault. Is it, I think it's like I, the way that Sam describes Gregory is really sweet. Actually, he's just like a kid with a, such a huge imagination. These are the divorce papers after Gregory died. Lost eight seconds. The eight seconds were lost because I couldn't flip the, the I couldn't I couldn't flip the whale over. That was the worst thing. Just couldn't flip the whale over at all. All right. So now we're gonna do Gus. Gus was Don's other brother. I can't imagine my mom ever. So after, yet. so after. Gregory dies, uh, Sam and Kay get a divorce, and Sam gets remarried, and so this is the this is the, the, the second wedding. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard. Before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. So the way this works is you just have to know where to fly the kite to continue the story. Or continue the poem in this case. This is a poem that Don wrote for for Gus. Kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Right here. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband. I believe we go all the way to the all the way over here to unlock this lodge these letters here. Oh, come on. Let's lodge these letters right now. Time for photos came, and Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Yeah, so this is the next thing to continue the story, is to... Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. Now we're just gonna just spray this time. Make the music louder. I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. And that's Gus. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Yeah, and the names in this family are very interesting. Edith is, of course, Edith is Edith Jr., right? So Edie is Edith Sr. They mention that. There's there's uh, some blurb, uh, some optional blurb, which she mentions being Edith Jr., not really thinking about it. But she was for sure going to be named after somebody no matter what. So now we're going to escape. So we've done all of this entire... My mom moved to We've done all of that uh, that generation. We did Gus Gregory and her dad. So now it's time to do my brothers. Uh, that was interestingly phrased, but yeah. So what we've got left is we've got uh, we've got Milton and Lewis, Edith's two brothers, and then the last final story, which is the last of the required story. a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. So this explains the crazy like why the house looks so insane because it just kept building on top of it. So the, the very end of it, so that's why there's like a little tip at the very top on the third floor. And that explains why it looks like that. Is they moved back after, uh, so... Don moved away and moved to India and then got married, had three kids. Her husband died. Sanjay. Our, our dad, basically. 
Now we're going to do, uh, so this is the middle brother. So uh, we're the baby, we're the youngest of the three kids. The oldest one is Lewis. This is the one we're gonna do after Milton. Or the one who disappeared first. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. So this is, there's no, uh, there's no narration. This is just, so if you've been, if you've been really sharp and looking around, anytime we're in a secret tunnel where we're going from room to room, you'll actually see that Milton has drawn something on the wall somewhere, everywhere. So Milton basically found all these places and that's part of why Don locked up all the rooms. That was Milton. Milton disappeared when Edith was four. Was four when there you go. And we don't know where Milton went at all. We still don't. Oh boy. Mom spent months so we're gonna leave Milton's I'm castle here and we're gonna go into Lewis's room. Here. Whatever Milton had found in the house. It's really strange that they would lock up a door and then just leave the window open anyway. So we ignore that normally. In any percent, we just go right uh, up these stairs into Lewis's room, and then we'd exit Lewis's room immediately, and then go up into Edith's room. So now Mom, we've Dad. done Milton, so now we're going to go into Lewis's Lewis room, like we normally would, but then we're going to stop and died, actually do Lewis's minigame, um, which is, in my opinion, the best minigame uh, in the whole game, and also the longest one, but it's definitely the best one. Uh, I think they, they did a really good job with it. A bad back corner right here. So it's right. That part of him lived on. Dear Mrs. Finch. So this is uh, in the form of a, a letter from Lewis's psychiatrist. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe right. Lewis first noticed the <clears throat> So I'm controlling Lewis's hand with my right analog stick, and that's important. So we work at a it's salmon cannery, so I'm just chopping the hot heads off of salmons. But he withdrew part of himself. In fact, if you uh, at the very beginning of the game when you enter the kitchen through the garage, you can actually find there's a huge His mind began to wonder. There's a huge stack of salmon cans, actually. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about, then something moved. Bats and toads. So what I'm, what's happening here is I'm still controlling Lewis's hand in real life with my right analog stick. But I'm also controlling his imagine his, his, the imaginary Lewis with the left analog stick, so it ends up being actually quite interesting to control. Because you, you're basically using your two hands completely independently. And real life only real life only really uh, influences uh, his imagination life. Uh, there are little um, there are little locks, and the locks are always in the shape of a salmon, and then as soon as you chop off one of the salmon heads, it'll unlock. So part of the speed strats here is 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 having the right cadence of uh, chopping off the fish heads so that you don't wait too long in the imaginary world. Um, so you're not waiting so long in the imaginary world to make sure that there's a, a salmon to, to chop. I even encouraged him. As you can see, as it as the uh, as the video game or the imaginary world, it's basically a video game. Though. A um, as it gets more detailed and uh, elaborate, the real world the sort of slowly starts to fade away. Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick so brick. you can see that the world is fading away in the sense that there's less of it on the screen, but also the sound of the cannery is getting more and more muffled over time. So we started as like a, it was like a, it was like a, a top-down 2D platformer, and now we've sort of graduated to some sort of like isometric uh, sort of deal, sort of a Diablo-style deal. 
day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his so yeah, so and, and, and you can see in real life his uh, his really really vivid imagination was having like a real world, real life like real world sound like real world um, repercussions or consequences. Were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. Got these stairs here. He held an election for mayor. Oh, he held an election in his in his head for mayor. So we're gonna start. But his mind was already wandering. We're going to now we're now we're in now we're it's a sort of a. Now it's even more muffled. Real life's even more muffled and even smaller, and now we're now we're Link in Wind Waker, basically. New Louisville. Oh yeah, and all the names of these new towns are all uh, fun little puns. New Louisville. Saint Louis. Saint Louis, get it? His name's Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. This is my favorite one right here. Minneapolis. Minneapolis, get it? Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. So the the, the only reason I'm con the, the only reason I'm uh, even chopping up the fish is that the fish will actually stack, and it'll actually get hard to see the uh, the imaginary world. And of course, we're gonna go the rainbow route here, so. We found a beautiful prince to marry. The prince was Shout out to Power of Pride. For... Radiant rainbows. Radiant rainbows. There's no, no, no offense to Sinister Serpents or anything. Big ups to snakes as well, but we're, we're doing rainbows today. And we can knock over these guys. You don't want to actually knock him over because it slows you down. The sound of his... Electric sitar. I'm gonna hear the sitar. So. Apparently our prince is George Harrison, which I'm, I'm cool with, honestly. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. It, you know, it kind of feels like we might Even almost be done, but uh, not. Okay, so we're following the we're following the prince here. He you can see him. Was all in his imagination. So now you can see it's getting more complex. Now, so now we're like instead of isometric, it's like behind the. Uh, so I was waiting there, so I didn't have to wait too long there. So now it's over the shoulder instead of isometric. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, same sort of thing. The, the load caused my input to get dropped there. So now the cannery is totally gone, as you can tell. There's no more cannery. We just got fish on the screen, and then we throw them, and then they just disintegrate. So the cannery no longer exists, as far as we're concerned. But the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination I'm no longer even going body. to chop anymore. We don't need to. It was hard to, to chop it. anymore. And now we're first person, but we're also in the cannery again. So you can actually see. So this is this is imaginary Lewis walking in real life. There's real life Lewis's locker. So this is this is uh, imagined Lewis walking in his own world. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Basically, Lewis in his head, the the king, and Lewis, the cannery worker, became two separate entities in his head, and it was he couldn't reconcile them anymore. So there's there's you can see Finch on, on his on the back of his shirt there. So that's Lewis, actually. And I think you all know what's coming. I still thought I could save him.
even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace oh, no, this is like fully first person. So this is actually faster. This this is a conveyor belt, so it's ostensibly like an auto scroller, but it is actually fa faster to like also walk. So we're walking and we're on an, on an, a conveyor belt. Insisted on inviting him. A wise calico cat. His prince waited, holding his crown. Prince waited. Your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the best of the mini games. Seconds? That's fine. We're gonna draw Lewis. So we're done. We filled out the entire oh, tree, really as you cool. notice, except for Don and Edie. I wish you could have met him. So that's why I have I have three separate I have three separate uh splits for Don, Edie, Don, and Edith, but it's all one story basically. We're gonna go up to Edith's room and fill out the rest of the story. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. Load. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. What happened yeah. tonight had been coming for a long time. So, of course, still, you're always kind of fighting the controls because the the camera always wants to, you to see the what Edith is saying, but I don't always care about that so much. just want to go to the next area, for the most part, as the speedrunner. But it had to end. One We're going all the way up into the loft. All that's left now Edith's rooms. About that last night. That's it. So now we're coming back from e from Lewis's funeral, and Edith is like, what, 11 years old or something? 10 or 11? There's lots of little things that, little movement things that happen in the speedrun that you don't really notice unless you're really paying attention, and a lot of it has to do with uh, pressing, pressing arrow, like, uh, directional, like, on your analog stick to open up, like, pages and books and stuff, or, or unfurl letters. You're oh, I'm always controlling Edith when that happens, and it's really, really strange. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go so these are the three living oh. finches. These are the three remaining finches I'm alive. Sorry. You're right. Me, well, Edith, in the corner. Let's just enjoy and then I'm there's Dawn in blue, which is my mom. Edith, and then there's Edith. Excused. Then there's Edie, Edith Sr., which is Dawn's grandmother, my great-grandmother. Dawn's dad's mom. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. So now the year is 2010. I don't think That's where we are right now. Entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. Run a, the story. So this is Edie trying to impart some knowledge on to Edith. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your story. I think it's best. So once again, I'm just fighting the camera most of the time here. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear. There's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way It way was the out. first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. 
They called it the lowest tide in a thousand, thousand years. I love Edie's God voice because Edie was actually born abroad in Norway. So she just has this Norwegian accent. You always hear it, actually. The other time you really hear it is um, in Calvin's story when she's calling for Calvin and Sam to come eat. And you can hear her uh, her accent. I think that's just a nice little touch. When the fog rolled in, and she's in her 90s by now. I lost my way. I got turned around. And when, when you hear her say, I got turned around, you turn around. Actually. I got turned around. Now we're going to find the, the deer. I started seeing things. And the deer. And then there's a mattress, like a bed frame that we find here. Things that I had long forgotten. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. There's your bed frame, so we're getting close to the end. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Well, yeah, maybe so you're, you are blindly going through the, the fog there. It's a little bit random when you get that. That's that same, the same front yard there. This is, the this is the house as it was back then. But that I need you to try and eat it. And of course, as usual, the mom ruins everything here. It's mine. Eat it. Mom, you're gonna rip it. Let go. I kicked and screamed, but mom dragged me to the car. I never saw great grandma Edie again. By Edie. That was it for Edie. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. And now it's the story of just Don and Edith, After the last that, two finches. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. There's a cadence here to, to getting that to come off, and I, I don't really know what it is yet. She got better for a while. Got the finger gloves some more. Another one of those things where, like... I was alone. There's nothing to tell about last Dawn's death. It was very life. normal. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. So now she's directly addressing her unborn child. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes appreciate how strange and brief all of this is this journal was supposed to be for you this is, i mean this is obviously very dramatic but i think it actually does a really good now, job of actually being impactful it's a big reason why i really like this game i just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself here's the big reveal i guess if you're reading this now things didn't work out that way <laughs> This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Yeah. Good luck. So we're actually her kid, with a broken arm, by the way. And, uh... And you can see, that based on the dates, my guess is that Edith died in childbirth. Based on the dates, she's 22 weeks pregnant in 2016 when she's in the house, and then you can see the date of death is January 2017. The timing works out pretty well. And time is when it fades out like that. So, 428, not too bad, not too shabby at all. 
So yeah, that was uh, What Remains of Edith Finch, 100%. And I love this game. Uh, it is it is a little bit... Uh, it's a little dark, obviously. Death is sort of the main focus of the game, but... Um, it's still uh, super well made, really charming, really well written. Surprisingly well written for something that's could very easily be super campy or really just overly dramatic or like I don't know it toes a line I find that it toes a line really well between like funny and very serious and understated and Yeah, uh, that'll be it for me. Uh, I always, whenever I play it, I always let the credits run. That'll be it. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody.